in college, uh, you're going to be having papers, you'll have papers that are APA, uh, which stands for the American Psychological Association, and MLA, which is the Modern Language Association. You might also have papers that are in the Chicago Manual of Style. There are just different, let's say, programs or formats that different professors, uh, teachers, I expect, all right? And so you need to be familiar with the different programs. So the first one we're doing is an APA project, which is, um, I will show you um, how to format that. And there's so many different resources out there. You don't need uh, Professor Bound. You can just Google search it like I do. Uh, I don't have this stuff memorized. Uh, they update their format. You know, they have an MLA meeting every year, a conference and professors and people in the field get together and talk about how we update it, how we make it better. So it's like a 2.0, 3.0, the new iPhone that comes out. Uh, constantly improving it. Um, the papers that I wrote in high school and college, yeah, footnotes and things like that, very, very different um, than what it looks like now. But there's so much information and it changes, you just wanna stay current. So you just ask Uncle Google, and you can get the information to how to properly format it. Because every paper, when I open it up, should be, should be the format. It's like when the Yankees take the field, everyone looks like a Yankee. There's no one wearing whatever he or she wants, right? Uh, so it needs to look like an APA paper. You know, it's not just, you know, it's creative and I'm just doing what I want to do. No, that's not going to be right, you know. Even though the content could be really good, you'll be marked down for you know having the standard format, right? So, needing to be familiar with the different formats uh, for APA, it's well, I will show you, and then it's an abstract, so it's like it's 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 like a takeaway, it's the summary of your information, and when you are doing research. Oftentimes, you just want to read the abstract. You don't want to read the entire article because it might be 30, 50 pages, and it may be not something that you need. But if you read the abstract, you can find out, hey, I think this is uh, really what I want to use in this course in economics or this course in psychology or in this course of whatever, whatever course it happens to be in school, in college, in grad school. And then you can go to the full text, click on that, and it'll give you the full text, right? which then you can you know, cite. For this project, you are doing a video presentation. So think about, you read your book, or some are reading, and now you want to glean some information. What makes this work a classic, right? We, you know, the, the list is extensive, mostly all nonfiction. And so what is it that makes this work a classic? And take examples from that, all right? And use the information you still need to cite information all right so you're citing the book right so you need that in your work cited page you also need other works that you've consulted to understand say origin of the species or sexual politics or gulliver's travels or dante's inferno or saint augustine's confessions all right so find other information that corresponds to and helps support what you found interesting about the book and really the takeaway. What is, what is you know, what's the function? Why did uh, St. Augustine write Confessions? Why did uh, St. Thomas Aquinas write what he wrote? Why did, uh, you know, Machiavelli write The Prince, uh, its influence? And you'll put that information in your video. And when you're doing your video, of course, you'll need to cite where you get this information. All right, I just don't want you reading off of some web page and it sounds like you wrote it when it's really you just reading off some web page. It might look great, it might be accurate information, but you need to still cite where you got it from. All right, um, and in your APA abstract, of course, you'll have that work cited page at the end. It's different from an MLA page, right? And I'll show you the difference. At the end of your video, I still want you to have your cited works, right? Technically, 
even if you're using, you, you take an image off the internet, you still need to cite where you got that from. So you can put like, you know, it's fair use. You're not making money out of this. It's academic. Um, so there shouldn't be a copyright issue, but you still need to cite where you received information. Now, if you're talking about your impressions of the book, yeah, you don't have to cite that, you know, or what you found difficult or challenging. Um, that's, that's different, right? You don't have to cite that. But if, you're, if you found information and you're speaking about it, even in summary, you still have to cite it, right? So whether you're paraphrasing, summarizing, or direct quoting. Now you can take a direct quote from the book, place it into your video, and read that. that that's great, right? Um, if you read this as a book, you can put the page number, okay? If it's online, of course, where many of these works are, you know, um, Found most, almost all these books are you know outside the realm of the hundred year copyright law, um, so you know anyone can publish it. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, this should be fun. All right. And what would be interesting at the end of the video is okay, you read Einstein's theories of relativity, but you know where was he wrong? Einstein was wrong on a few things, right? So you know science is correct as of now, right? But we have theories, we, I'm not a scientist, but scientists have, you know, these beliefs and they're true until they're proven wrong, right? So what was, so like, you know, Hobbes or any of these great authors that you guys have read, you know, they were for the time period, but, you know, how does the work stand? Sigmund Freud and psychoanalysis Right, that's kind of been debunked, right? And so what do psychologists say now about Freud? Where is he right? Where is he wrong? Uh, that would be a really, really good uh, conclusion, right? So hopefully this helps. Uh, and then I will also show you a little bit about, uh, you know, the structure of the APA format. Uh, so I will need both the title page, abstract, uh, works cited page, bibliography, and also your incredible video, right? So lots of skills being used here, right? And then of course we'll tackle the MLA paper, which will be a, a traditional research paper and other types of documented essays, right? This is all helping you for college, university, graduate school, post-grad stuff, uh, medical school, whatever you're going into this is really gonna help you. Uh, understand the different styles and get ready for, you know, um, like presenting a thesis defense um, at the different advanced levels. All right, so okay. scholars, uh, here's an example from uh, last year's uh, class. Uh, Abigail Malinsky did a great job um, with the book Sexual Politics, and this is the uh, title page, right? Uh, a paper presented to Mr. Bound, English Department, English Regional High School. This is this should look like this. All right. Except the only thing that's different, of course, is the title. All right. Um, impartial fulfillment, uh, AP Lang and Comp by your name, and then the date. All right. This is very different from the MLA format that you are familiar with. Right. But in college, you all have classes and teachers uh, that are asking for APA. Right. So here's the abstract again. Up here, the title. Uh, the abstract is, you know, Kate Millett's book that encompasses hundreds of years of women's history and is unique in being the founding of the modern feminist movement. All right, so it's a bit of like an overall view. Um, and then, of course, getting to the thesis, criticized for subversive attitudes, including the romanticization of rape as a healthy relationship structure. Um, and she's praised for innovative thoughts and in relationship between perceptions of sex and sexuality. All right, keywords. So it's almost like tags, right? Like uh, you know, you know, hashtag patriarchy, sexual politics, sexual revolution, and then instead of works cited, we have references. Okay, sexual politics is up here, and of course, this is the uh, author, and then the two secondary works that she uh, consulted for doing the paper. All right, so let's take a brief look at her video. Feminist novel called Sexual Politics. 
This book is comprised of Millet's life work in the field of women's studies and describes the status of women in society throughout various eras in history. Furthermore, it directs pointed criticism to academics, mainly men, in power. Um, she especially criticized male authors with a large following and lots of readers, who mainly utilized highly misogynistic and destructive techniques in their writing. One such example is that she specifically calls out three male authors who romanticized rape as a healthy and desirable relationship structure, um, among other things. All right, so that's the basic overview, you know, um, and then getting into, you know, definition. What's sexual politics? Let's define what we're talking about. And there are two different types of counterfunctions. And so, you know, being creative, you know, having a quote. Um, about the historical standings of women in society. So up until pretty much the early 1900s, which is her focal point of study, women managing the homes and interesting. So lots of information here. Time period and even by today's standards, women had incredible rights in society. Like I can't because after later John Genet, whose work she actually idolized in a bit, she this is what she All right, and the one thing that I will be requiring you guys to do that I did not have my AP scholars last year doing is having an actual work cited at the end of this video, okay? What you could do, too, is if you wanted to find some music um, as a bass, you know, you don't want it overpowering your voice, um, but you can go to uh, Kevin McLeod. I actually use Kevin McLeod a lot. Uh, as long as you cite him properly, you can get a free light. You can get a license, uh, a free license as long as you cite it. Um, and you can pick a song that does not, that is not going to be a copyright strike that can, you know, go along with your theme. So you don't want something fun and like, you know, frolicky and talking about sexual politics, you know, you don't want something like, so you want to match the theme of the song and the feeling of the song, the mood, the atmosphere with the subject matter. Okay. Um, that's not required, but it just gives the, your video a little bit more polish, right? All right. Some of you are very confused and really this should be a separate uh, video on how to upload a video. All right. So let me show you while I'm here, um, you just, you know, everyone has a Gmail account associated with your school, right? So you just do create, upload video. And let me uh, share with you just a quick little example. Of course, um, I have something right here, which is part of this uh, presentation. I'm not going to upload this. Actually, I'm just going to go through the steps to show you what to do. So I drag that in there. It's an MP4. I call it something, and I would call it sexual politics, but you know, uh, a presentation by uh, Abigail Maliski. And then you want to tell your viewers who might be viewing this all over the world what this is about. All right. Uh, you probably don't have a playlist unless you have different, you know, I have like nine or 10 different, you know, playlist, American literature, rhetoric, um, funny stuff, you know, whatever. Um, the audience, no, it's not made for kids, sexual politics. Okay. Options, you can put tags on there, right? Like those keywords. And then you would go to next. Let me just do this for now. And then you go to the next screen. And then this is very important. Um, if you just want me or someone who has a link to see it, you go to unlisted, all right? If you want, if you're so proud of this and you think people everywhere in the world should watch this, and really that's the kind of thing I want you to be able to do. You're so proud of this project that um, you want to share it with people. And so you have the option of between unlisted and public. Private, only you and people you choose to watch, don't do private, do unlisted or public. All right, and then you will go to save. 
and and then it will you know take its time to upload depending on your internet speed and how large your file is and what type of file it is right some some of you have very large files um i could show you you know again you know what kind of files for instance um here's something i'm making this is on final cut you guys are probably using imovie uh, you might also, if you're really fortunate, have After Effects or Premiere, but uh, but Final Cut's great. iMovie is fine too for this. Um, you would go to Share, Master File, and Settings. I don't want audio only. I would do that if I'm doing a podcast. So I want video and audio. If I go here, yeah, that's a really large file, right? I generally like to use the H.264, which is, so you go from, look how much um, gigabytes that in is, college. and it's really uh, you're gonna be having papers, high resolution, you right? That are if you're, you know, Steven Spielberg, yeah. Um, and you still can, it just takes forever. Uh, but if you go here, it condenses it to, you know, 1.41 gigabytes versus, you know, so, and that's that should be fine, all right? And then QuickTime Player, you go to Next, and then you would just where you want to save it to. Now, a lot of you are just doing something like this, APA introduction. And imagine if I had 150 students, which 135 students, everyone had the same kind of like APA project, APA no. Your name and the project. So Abigail Malinsky, sexual politics, APA project. Just don't put APA project. That will drive me absolutely crazy, right? Um, so it needs to have your name and the title and then maybe like APA project. Uh, but just don't call it like my video project. Imagine getting 135. Mr. Brown, did you get my video project? Um, I got 135, all basically called, you know, my APA or my AP research project. You know, it, it needs to have a name. And it's easy for you to find it too on your iPad, on your desktop, uh, on your computer, wherever you are doing that. And then you would take that file and then uh, upload it to YouTube, right? Uh, the great thing about uh, YouTube is that, or, you know, you can you know, have the, the audio or the video and the audio. But for this project, you're going to do with both video and audio. Um, what you can also do if you don't know how to do this is to... Uh, this is getting into production and not so much APA, but that's okay. I think it's still important. Um, this track down here is my audio track. This is my video track. I didn't like my camera audio, so I have a microphone that was going at the same time that I linked it together. What you can do, what, you, what you'll probably want to do is do a voiceover. So record voiceover, and then you can just like, here we go. Hi, this is Walter Bound, just doing some uh, voiceover uh, practice. All right, so that's creating a second down here. So I actually don't want to use that, so I'll just delete that. But that's how you would do a voiceover, right? Um, iMovie has it. Final Cut has it. Uh, voiceovers are great. And then you can tweak the audio by going here. So I'm, I'm like, here's my audio track. I go up here, and then if I want to, like, voice enhance that sometimes makes it a little bit obnoxious um but then i do some analysis and i could you know play around with this a little bit um so that's uh, let me do one more thing and show you some resources let me just show you uh what it looks like on my end so if you don't have a link to youtube it drives me crazy so i click on let's say matthew's here and I just go to his YouTube page or, or the, his YouTube. It's very easy. I don't have to download anything. It's quick. In 1920, Dante Alighieri released his book, Divine Co All right. So, and then let me show you another one. Again, I should not have to go to download. Now, this one, I do have to download. And this it, this drives me crazy because now I have to... Yeah, see, you see what the problem comes? Um, I think this, and this was a very good project, by the way, but I think she linked it on another place, like, like say for here, I just click on the link. 
and it brings me right to it. There's no problems. So, it, so this is on John Locke and his second treatise, right, by uh, Ryan Lewis, uh, who is now a senior. Um, so, you know, if I have to do download and it's, it's, it's you know, open with, and this gets very, 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 very time consuming. I don't have that time. Um, and I'll ask you, just provide the link for me on YouTube, which can be unlisted or, you know, public. All right. That's totally up to you. Um, and let's just take one look at um, Purdue University. Their Purdue Online Writing Lab is a resource that I think is very effective. And you can go to um, APA, General APA Guidelines, Font, the seventh edition of the APA publication. So Purdue, um, they update things because you might do a search for it, but it might be like the fifth edition or the fourth edition. That's the problem with uh, online stuff. Things don't go away, right? Someone could be dead and they're still like, you know, around forever. So it's, you know, it, the internet's great for a lot of things, but sometimes things just don't go away and you're thinking this is relevant and updated and it's not, it's, it's really, really old. Um, and that's okay on some things and other things it's just not okay. Right. So, you know, like if you're researching like gun deaths or something and you find an article, but it's really from 2011, all right, or 2020, all right, make sure it's updated. And title page, this gives you exactly what you need, all right? Uh, author's name, institutional affiliation, Eastern Regional High School, you know, um, here, here is what Abigail's page looked like. And then the abstract right here, the keywords, and then of course the, the reference. Uh, I don't know why they don't have the reference, page, but that's probably somewhere else. Um, so using Purdue Al is a really good reference. Um, of course, there's other places that can give you the APA. Just go to someplace academic like Purdue University. Just don't go to like, you know, some sort of commercial site that's, that's there just to make money. The information might be correct, but it's always better having an academic source. All right. Any questions at all, uh, please let me know. Your project should be anywhere between seven minutes and 10 minutes. Some, of course, you can go over. Some projects went really over. Um, and have fun with it. All right. Take care. I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. I have lots of different episodes, lots of different series. It's not just uh, all on composition and rhetoric. And take care. Hopefully you enjoy this video. Um, any questions, let me know. Thank you for watching.